Hey, what's up everybody? This is Torch and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. This is Torch here on YouTube. I'm a producer, a drummer, and I'm also the author behind the book Trap Style Drumming for the Acoustic and Hybrid Drum Set available at Hudson Music as well as thisistorch.com. Today I have for you a tutorial. I want to show you how to route your channels from Ableton Live to the outputs of your Focusrite Scarlett interface. This would also apply to any other interface you have. It's all basically the same concept, but today I'm using Ableton Live and I'm using Focusrite Control with my Focusrite Scarlett interface. Now, there's a couple ways you could route sound, let's say to your front of house engineer when you're performing at a live show. One of the ways that I've commonly used is to just have a kind of a basic interface and I just have my stereo outs one and two and I just send them that stereo signal and that contains all of the sound coming out of my Ableton session, whether it's backing track or triggers or you name it. And that's totally acceptable in, in most venues and it's just one method of doing it. But another method you can do is you can create a little bit more separation for your session and, and for the front of house engineer at the venue. This method would allow the front of house mixing engineer to have a little bit more control with the balances of the sound you're giving them. So in other words, let's say that I have some drum triggers and I have some kick samples and I have some snare samples and hat samples and maybe a backing track. So right there, we have about four different outputs of stuff that we can send and they can mix those to however they sound best within the live setting. I've had, you know, students of mine kind of ask me about this. Um, so I figured I would make a video on it to kind of help anybody else out there who is kind of wondering the same things. So that's kind of the gist of it. And let's jump right into uh, Ableton and Focusrite and let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna set the stage for you here. So here I am in my Ableton session. Um, right now I have a channel of bass, a channel of guitar, some keys and drums and a backing track. So let's just kind of demo these um, just one at a time. So here's my bass part. Okay, excellent. Here's our guitar part. Okay, excellent. And then next up would be our keys part. And then finally, we have our drums. And then this is our backing track, but really it's just a placeholder. This is just all of these other elements kind of combined into one track. So it's just sort of serving as the backing track for this session, only for demonstration purposes. Cool, so just kind of a cool little vibey lo-fi example of a track we're gonna be using as our backing track. Um, the next thing I wanna kind of show you is our Focusrite control and just sort of, I wanna give you a brief rundown of the outputs that I have available here. Now, of course, the amount of out outputs and inputs that you have available on your interface might be different, but I'm gonna just show you what I have going on here. As some of this will probably apply to you, especially if you're using a Focusrite interface. So here are the main outputs, and this is where all of your main sound would be coming out of uh, from Ableton. Then I have some line outputs. This is my line outputs three and four. Then I have line outputs five and six. And then when I get to line outputs seven and eight on my interface, they are kind of a dual function or a shared output. So this output I have 
an, a headphone output as well as a line output. Down here with line outputs 9 and 10, it's the same exact thing. I have a headphone output as well as a line output. So for each of these, I would have to just kind of decide ahead of time what purpose am I going to be using either of these for. So for today's example, I'm going to commit my line outputs 9 and 10 as my headphone output, and I'm going to avoid using the line output aspect of this output. Okay, so going back into Ableton, now we need to do some routing. We need to start routing our outputs for Ableton so that we can send those signals into the Focusrite control. So let's start with our bass. So bass is going to be a mono signal. We only need one output for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here to where it says audio two and I'm going to click on where it says master so that we get a drop down menu. I'm going to select external output so that we can send the signal out of Ableton. And then I need to go to my output selection menu here and I need to choose a mono output. I'm going to go with three. So our main outputs are being taken up by outputs one and two. So I'm just going to move in order here and that's why I'm choosing output three for bass. So the next one is guitar, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna go down to audio two, where it says master, click down so I have the menu open, select external output, go down to the output selection menu, and since I have one and two taken up as my main outputs, and number three is now taken up by the bass, I'm gonna select four for my guitar. Then we get to our keys. I've made a little bit of a note here up on my track labeling here. Um, stereo. So keys are going to be a stereo signal. That means we're going to have to select a stereo pair as our output here. So I'm going to go down to the same spot here on the channel to audio two, where it says master, click the drop down menu, click external output. But this time, instead of selecting a mono output, I'm going to go into my output selection menu, and I'm going to select five and six. So far we have the main outputs as one and two. We have bass on three, guitar on four, and keys are now on five and six as a stereo pair. Next up is drums. I'm gonna do the same thing. Go to audio two and open up where it says master, external output, output selection, and I'm gonna choose the next set of outputs that are after everything else, and that's gonna be outputs seven and eight as a stereo pair, because we have a drum loop here, and that's a stereo sound. Now, on your channels, if you've created a few audio channels, you might have had your audio from set to an external input. All you do is you click on that, and you wanna to go to no input, because we're not really taking any signal from any inputs. Unless you have a microphone or a guitar plugged in, and that's the sound that you're routing in to Ableton, then you would just select no output. These are just samples that I have selected, and therefore I don't need to have any input coming from the interface. Lastly, we have our backing track. And since we pretty much plan to just have that going out of our main outputs, this is already set up for us. We don't really need to do anything further here. Okay, so short recap. We have our main outputs as one and two. We have our bass on output three. We have our guitar on output four. We have our keys on outputs five and six as a stereo pair. We have our drums on outputs seven, eight, also as a stereo pair. Our backing track is just going out of our main outputs one and two. And next thing we need to talk about is our click track. Because if we're on stage, we want to make sure we're playing along to a click. Obviously this is a preference, but many drummers like to play along to a click. Some musicians wanna have a click in their ear just to help them you know, lock into the track a little bit better. So we need to know where we're going to put this click track. So knowing all of the outputs that we've already selected, 
We have two other ones that are free. And where your click track is located in Ableton is through the queue out section. Right now, as you can see, it's going out of the one and two outputs, which is the same as our backing track and all of kind of our main sound, which is what the audience would hear. So obviously we don't want that. We want to select a free set of outputs that we can route to, let's say our headphone mix. So click down in the output, uh, select menu, and we're gonna go to the next available set of outputs, which would be nine and 10 for me. Again, for you on your interface, you might have your outputs one and two as being your main outs, and then you might only have a second set of outputs, maybe a three and four. So in that case, you would just choose whatever alternate output for your click, as long as it's not overlapping your main outputs. Okay, so now that we've done all of our routing through Ableton that we need to do, we now need to go and configure things in our Focusrite control or our interface software. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually go to my line outputs three and four. I know that my first two channels in Ableton were both mono, so I'm gonna go ahead and click where it says stereo and collapse that into two separate mono outputs. Now I have a line output three and a line output four. And I wanna stay pretty organized with this. So I'm gonna take my output three of Ableton and send that to line output three of my interface. All I have to do to do that is go into this menu and go to where it says playback DAW. This is where I grab any of the channels from my DAW. I go down to where I need to grab it, which is three. And now I have the signal from output three of Ableton, which in this case was my base. And to label it, I just click here and then I can label it accordingly. So if you remember correctly, we had output four of Ableton was our guitar. So again, keeping things organized, I'm gonna put my guitar from Ableton through line output four in my focus right control here. Click down here select through the playback dot and go up to where it says four so that focus right control knows where to grab grab the sound and for organizational purposes i will name this guitar okay moving right along now i'm on line outputs five and six and if you remember we had our stereo keys on outputs five and six of ableton so I'm just gonna throw those through line output five and six as a stereo pair through my focus right control as well. Again, go down to the menu here, select playback DAW so I can grab the sound from Ableton, go up to where it says five and six, and there it is, done. Next, I'm on my line output seven and eight. Remember, this was our dual function. We have the headphone output here as well as the line output, but we've decided in this particular configuration that this is going to be strictly a line output for us. We're not gonna be using the headphones for this uh, output. So I'm just gonna treat this like all of the previous line outputs. And on seven and eight of my Ableton session, I had drums. So I'm gonna go into the drop down menu, playback DAW, go to seven and eight, grab my drum sound and route it through my line outputs of seven and eight here on my interface. Okay, and then I have, of course, line outputs nine and 10. This is where I'm going to commit to making it a headphone mix. Okay, so I've basically, I've deleted everything that you may have seen here before. Um, I wanted to kind of start this from scratch so you can see how you would um, create the mix. So for line outputs nine and 10, which are gonna be my headphones, I'm gonna wanna have pretty much all of the music as well as having a click track. So all I have to do is click this plus button. And as long as I know where to grab stuff, I can go and grab it. So I know that I want stereo pair one and two. That's my backing track. So this is where I'm gonna hear any instrumental, you know, minus drums and, and certain elements um, that I need to hear. Next, I think I would like to have um, three, which is bass. 
Then I want to grab four, which is our guitar. Then remember, we had a couple of stereo pairs as well. So I'm going to grab outputs uh, five and six, which were my keys. And then there was outputs seven and eight, which were my drums. And then, of course, if you remember, we had set our click track to outputs nine and ten. So I'm going to grab that stereo pair nine and ten as well. I have them already labeled here. Here's my backing track, bass, guitar, keys, drums, and click. So now I have every element in my song in my headphones. And, <clears throat> and if you're familiar with this uh, Focusrite control at all, um, when you add elements in any one of these outputs, they get reflected everywhere else. So since I've added them here, they're also here, 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 and here. Of course, these are all direct routing, so these would not apply. You don't need to worry about the mix here. But with the monitor outputs one and two, you may want to adjust the mix so that the front of house engineer is getting exactly what he needs from outputs one and two. So since we've already sent the front of house engineer our bass, our guitar, our drums, we just need to make sure that we don't send him the same stuff twice. So since we're sending backing track out of monitor outputs one and two, we can basically get rid of everything else. We don't need to have any bass or guitar or keys or drums, and most certainly no click. And the other way you could do this would be to hit your mute buttons. So at this point, the front of house engineer is only receiving backing track from outputs one and two. So quick recap on what we're sending to our front of house engineer, starting with our main outputs. On monitor outputs one and two, they're getting backing track. On line outputs three, we're sending them bass. On line output four, we're sending them guitar. On line outputs five and six, we're sending them a stereo pair for our keyboards. On line outputs seven and eight, we're sending them a stereo pair for our drum loop. And then, for line outputs 9 and 10, we're not sending them anything because that's just going to our headphones. Okay, so that just about covers everything. If you like this video, do all the stuff. Please subscribe, like, shoot me a comment down below. Let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you hated it. Let me know if you want to see more stuff, specifically stuff that you want to see. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. And um, I guess that's it for me. Um, this is Torch signing off. Peace.